Hello and welcome. Bill Judge with Monkworks here. I am a RV8 builder, pilot, and electrical engineer. Been flying my RV8 for more than 15 years, 1500 hours on it. I am the developer of the patent pending MZ30L lightweight 2.6 pound 30 amp generator for experimental airplanes. Some background on me and why I designed this device is that I've got an electrically dependent airplane. So dual electronic ignition, glass panel, IFR, and to mitigate power failures, I've flown around for 15 years with a dual battery diode isolated critical bus type system. You know, my electrical system is safe in that I can get to a suitable landing place, but if I did lose my, my primary power source, um, some of the places I've flown, like you know, down through the Caribbean Sea to Aruba, to the very end of Baja, you know, back country of Idaho, losing a power source and having to land in one of those places means you're going to spend a lot of time there trying to sort out a replacement. And, um, and so I always had that gnawing fear in the back of my mind that I would get stuck somewhere. So, you know, fast forward 10 years, I'm looking around at, at electric cars proliferating everywhere. So, you know, you've got not just electric cars, but scooters and one wheels and hoverboards and electric motorcycles. And you know, meanwhile, all of the electrical power sources that are available for experimental planes kind of look a lot like this. So 2006, they look like this. And you know, if you discount this, this is still kind of what they look like. There's nothing wrong with old technology if there's nothing better out there. But I did my research on you know, what kind of power density was available in the motors they use in these electric vehicles, and the, the power density is off the charts on these things. The rare earth magnets in these brushless DC motors make for very high power density, both for power generation and also for you know, power output, for mechanical power output. So power density is here. The, the next part of the equation is, you know, trying to figure out how to manage the power coming out of here. So you got variable voltage, variable frequency, AC coming out of here, and you need you know constant voltage DC coming out of uh, out of the regulator here. So the regulator handles all of that, and um, you know to to me the fact that we're running around with with systems that are 40, 50, 60 years old um, when there's something better out there is kind of like. You know, we're running around with, with flip phones when everyone else is running around with iPhones. You know, and, and experimental planes are, are generally the forefront of general aviation, and, and you know, this is, this is what we've come up with now. And I think it's dramatically better than what's out there. So with that come a host of other advantages too. So you, know, you get a compact design, obviously. I've redesigned the shear coupling and uh, you get a much, much more compact profile off the face of the vacuum pad. So I picked up about an inch of space there. So, you know, mechanically, the thing is, is more compact. Um, from an electrical perspective, I used to have a large ANL fuse on my firewall. I was able to get rid of that for a tiny fuse on here that's about the size of a grain of rice. And Moreover, that fuse will never blow as long as this device is functioning properly because it's got electronic current limiting. So hundreds of thousands of times a second, it checks how much current am I putting out. And if the current's out of limits, it brings the voltage back until the current comes within limits again. So the fuse can't blow as long as the thing is working properly. It's completely self-exciting. So you turn the generator, you get power out. No need for a field. So you don't have any kind of phantom current you need to supply to it. If you spin it, it's gonna put out power, completely self-exciting. Um, it knows how much current it's putting out, so it's able to determine if it's putting out current, it'll continue to do so. If not, it puts itself in a standby state. So if there's something else attached to your bus that's supporting the bus, it will sit back and wait to see the bus voltage reduced to 13.7 volts, and then it'll come online and support the bus. So you can overlay it on top of an existing electrical system very easily without having to worry about the two systems fighting each other or anything like that. It'll sit back and wait for a compelling need. And then we'll step in, support the bus, and then if it realizes that something else is supporting it, it backs off and goes into standby state again. Um, 
It also has a status light. So if you had an aerobatic airplane, you want to be very weight conscious, but you still want to run a smoke pump, this will run your smoke pump all day long, and then it'll drive an LED or a, a status light to tell you I'm online and producing power, or I'm online, not able to maintain my rated voltage, but I'm trying to, trying to do that. And that's gonna either because the current limit is, is being exceeded so that the load is too high or the RPM is too low. So on the ground, over 1,000 RPM, you're gonna see 15 amps about, and then over 1,800 RPM, you'll see 30 amps out of the device. So whether it's a you know, primary system in a, a ultra, light, ultra lightweight airplane, you know, aerobatic kind of airplane, or whether it's a backup, you know, this, is, this is your hot ticket here for, uh, for lightweight, high performance electrical system. We're gonna have some additional videos coming out. There's gonna be a uh, bench demo where we show um, short circuit features. There's uh, diagnostic blink codes that come out of it to help you on the install. Um, the over voltage demo and then we'll probably have an installation video as well. So I hope you uh, go on the website, check out the installation manual. There's you know, lots and lots of details on, on how it should be installed. If you have any questions, you know, please hit us up. The uh, contact information is on the website as well. So email addresses and phone numbers. And we uh, look forward to hearing from you. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care.